I don't have a microphone, yes. but I'd like to finish my speech. I'm very near the end. Yes. So, I hope somebody will film this. And I hope that you'll be able to hear what I say. You're going to be there here? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Hold on, one second. Your media? Yes, from the cleaner. He's from the cleaner. Oh, from the cleaner. All right. Can you hear me though? Yes, I can. The point I was making when the Prime Minister chose to walk out and was left the, the parliament without a quorum. I think it's the first time this has ever happened in independent Jamaica. That in a budget speech, the opposition has been denied the opportunity to finish their presentation. And here I am assembled on Duke Street. To, I was near the end anyway, but there were some important points that needed to be made. And I'm going to continue. The point I made when they walked out was this. When the former speaker was forced to resign as a result of an integrity commission investigation, the move to replace her with the wife of the Prime Minister so that the head of parliament is now the spouse of the head of government does not sit well with the tradition that the speaker must act independently of the government of the day. That is a fundamental principle of the Westminster system of democracy. Yes. And it is protected in a number of ways. For example, in the United Kingdom, nobody runs against a speaker in an election. They make sure the speaker is elected because that person is supposed to be independent. So that, I think, that move to do what ha ha happened in our case here was inconsistent with that level of independence that's required. The failure to disclose the identity of the so-called illicit six MPs who are under investigation by the Integrity Commission for illicit enrichment remains a festering sore, only made, wor made worse by the Prime Minister's gag order on his own cabinet ministers from speaking publicly on matters to do with the Integrity Commission. The Prime Minister's statutory declarations of assets and liabilities and income have not been certified and published by the Integrity Commission for successive years. It is untenable for the head of government of Jamaica not to be in good standing with the country's Integrity Commission for a prolonged period. All I can say to him, and I would have said it to him if we were still in the House, all I can say if I were in your position, I would take with myself and hand over to someone else who is not compromised. <laughs> iconic global track superstar, the Honorable Usain Bolt, and many other in innocent investors were carried down in the scandalous SSL fiasco. And we can't hear anything about charges being brought against the culprits. I have been told that the DPP's office is pulling, is dragging their feet when there are a number of people that the Financial Investigations Division have, are seeking to bring charges against. In fact, in August last year, the Gleaner carried a report that, uh, from the FID that there were several persons that they were intending to move against with charges. That report is no longer on the Gleaner website, but I am told that the DPP's office is dragging their feet on this. The Kroll forensic report, which has cost taxpayers millions of dollars, was delivered to the government months ago. It must be released to the public so we can see what the findings are. Jamaica will not accept a cover-up of this shameful debacle which has tainted our country's reputation as a safe and well-regulated place for Jamaicans at home and abroad to save and invest. In fact, a commission of inquiry into this SSL scandal will be needed. Jamaica is crying out for change in this area. This is why I have identified an entire cluster of portfolios within our own governance structure to address the now desperate area of transparent and accountable governance. We must translate good governance principles into tangible action that restores trust and confidence in our leaders and preserves our cherished freedoms and democratic way of life. Change means no more hiding of the truth from Jamaicans. Change, change means no more deception in official public communication. Change means putting transparency and communication at the heart of good governance. It affirms that respect is due to those who elect governments and pay taxes. 
That's why we will implement a comprehensive strategy centered around engagement and accessibility. Our aim is to ensure that every voice is heard, yeah. to bridge the gap between leadership and the people. This means holding town hall meetings, physical and virtual, to give every citizen a voice in the decision-making process. It means conducting community walks, listening to the concerns of our constituents, and working together to find solutions. It means providing regular progress reports on projects and programs, and keeping the public informed and involved every step of the way. Change means practicing accountability as a central principle of good governance. That's why after the terrible incident of the woman being beaten in public with a stool, I tabled an impeachment bill in the House of Representatives in 2021 to provide a mechanism to hold to account any parliamentarian whose egregious conduct brings his or her office into disrepute. Despite this having been a manifesto promise of this JLP government from the 2016 general elections, my impeachment bill has not been allowed to go forward to a joint select committee for wide stakeholder consultation and then be passed into law. They don't believe in accountability. When I entered the political arena, there were some entrenched ways of doing things. Making change happen requires a fresh approach. Things will be very different under my watch because I will tolerate none of it. The last PNP administration put local government in the constitution. We passed the three strategic laws to modernize the legal framework of local government in keeping with modern best practices. One of those laws, the Local Governance Act, makes provision in section 18 for the recall of an elected mayor and it may, be, it may be initiated by a petition alleging a, a charge of gross misconduct or dereliction of duty and it has to be signed by at least 25% of the registered voters in the city municipality. The next PNP government will institute a fair and balanced recall system for elected officials, both at the local government and parliamentary level to deepen accountability and empower the voters with recourse where they are badly let down by whoever they elect to parliament. Change, change means not taking away the rights of the people of Portmore without proper consultations with them, followed by a referendum to let them make the decision whether or not they want to give up their city municipality status and their right to directly elect their mayor, a right given to them by the People's National Party. Jamaica has spoken and the PNP has listened to the concerns of the people. We are offering solutions based on thorough research and consultation with the stake our stakeholders. We will embark on this journey together with the people towards a future where opportunity for advancement is not a privilege, but a right for yeah. all. Yeah. We commit to good governance for the people of Jamaica, yeah. not as some abstract concept, but as a living promise fulfilled to every citizen of our nation. We are on a fast track on the road to change, and we invite all Jamaicans along this exciting journey in a spirit of hope for a better and brighter future for all our people. And I would have ended, thank you, Madam Speaker, but I won't end that way because I'm not in the parliament. I'm on duty with my parliament. The torch has been lighted, the dawn is at hand.